Uh, my name is Muhammad Al Tayyib. The title of my presentation is Opportunistic Beam Training with Hybrid Analog Codebooks for Millimeter Wave Systems. So the outline is my presentation is as follows. Uh, first, I'll give some motivation and background. Then I'll talk about the system model, uh, the proposed work uh, results, and then draw some conclusions. So as we're all aware, there is an abundance of bandwidth in the millimeter wave band, which potentially could be used to provide gigabit per second data rates. Uh, in addition to this, the small wavelength enables a small size array with many antenna elements. And of course, uh, large arrays provide high directivity to combat uh, path loss and also reduce interference. As with any communication system, there is a need for uh, channel estimation. And typically, there are two main directions for acquiring channel knowledge at the transmitter. Uh, the first technique is, uh, is actually channel uh, per antenna channel estimation, which means that for every antenna, there, uh, the transmitter uh, broadcast pilots, and uh, the receiver uh, estimates the channel of each antenna. Uh, this, of course, uh, has a drawback in millimeter wave systems, and this is because of the low SNR before beamforming. Another direction that's being taken is uh, beam training with analog beamforming. So in this case, uh, the transmitter and the receiver uh, train their systems, form different beams, and train their systems uh, with many beams. Uh, after that, they look for the best beam pair, uh, and the best beam pair that maximizes the SMR is selected. Uh, of course, this technique here has the problem of uh, high uh, training overhead, because this, especially if you have uh, narrow uh, ba uh, beams, because this has to be repeated uh, many times. To reduce this training overhead, Prior work has focused on hierarchical beam training. So basically, in hierarchical beam training, as we see here, we have uh, beam, beam training is performed in several stages. And um, in every stage, the in every stage we have a sector. As we see here, we have this red sector and blue. So in every stage we have a sector, and beam training is performed only on those sectors. After each, after every stage, the beam training or the sector that results in the highest SNR is further investigated into the following stage and so on. Of course, this technique has been shown to reduce the training overhead when compared to exhaustive search techniques. Uh, however, they have some drawbacks or some limitations maybe I would say that uh, or some disadvantages is that they do not exploit the, ba the base station mobile station system, channel reciprocity. They always converge to the highest resolution beam. And um, they may not be optimal for delay sensitive applications. Of course, to form these beams that cover a specified sector with, uh, with almost um, the same gain, could the design is usually required. The proposed code books in the literature uh, do not consider RF constraints or hardware constraints. And these are basically the, 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 the uh, modulus, constant modulus, and quantized phase shifts of the phase shifters. Uh, the array size is always, or the number of antennas is fixed, irrespective of the desired beam pattern. We'll show later why this is important. It's important to uh, have flexible array size. And also requires large number of RF chains to realize uh, good beam patterns. In this work, we're going to propose uh, hierarchical beam training. But the proposed training technique is opportunistic in the sense that uh, training is terminated once the quality of, of service threshold is satisfied. Uh, the proposed technique also exploits the channel reciprocity, and hence no explicit feedback uh, channel is required. In this work also we explore hybrid codebooks. Uh, 
as I said previously, we need, high, we need some code books, to code book design to cover a specified sector with almost a constant gain for training purposes. So in this work, we also design hybrid code books. However, our code books respect RF constraints that I mentioned previously. And also, the array size is set as a function of the desired beam pattern. If we look at the uh, system model of our, uh, the system model that we consider here, we adopt the hybrid structure. So you see here we have a baseband precoder and then we have an RF uh, precoder. Um, and then we have the channel. And again, we have RF and baseband at the receiver. And we have this hybrid architecture over here where we have large number of antennas and we have also a few RF chains. The assumptions that we take in this work are that the base station and the mobile station employ, both employ hybrid analog digital precoders. Uh, the channel model, uh, the channel is modeled as geometric sparse millimeter wave uh, 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 channel, which is actually here, this equation. As we see, it's dominated by, we have a few dominant paths. Uh, we have um, an array response, uh, array response vectors with angle of departures and angle of arrivals. And we have a complex gain for each of the paths. And in this work, we, for simplicity, we model it as a Gaussian random variable. We also assume that uh, perfect channel estimation at the mobile and the mobile station, the base station in this work. So uh, I'll go now to the proposed training algorithm. So the proposed training algorithm, as we said, is, uh, is opportunistic in the sense that being is the, the training is terminated once a quality of service threshold is uh, satisfied. So in this case, we don't need to always uh, look for the best beam. And this could be, for example, suitable for uh, delay sensitive applications. So same as the hierarchical beamforming technique, um, the whole angular space is divided into sectors and beam training is performed into several stages. So at the beginning, the base station and the mobile station, they form S equals to log BK code books for multi-stage beam training. So here, K is actually the total number of beam directions. B here, the subscript B is actually the, represents the number of sectors search sectors in every stage. So here, for example, we have two, right? We have two in every uh, stage. We have, we're just searching in two sectors. So therefore, here B equals to two. Uh, on the first stage, um, the base station and the mobile station exchange training packets using beams from their code books. So F actually is, the, is a code book at the MS, at the base station, uh, uh, and W is a code book at the mobile station. The base station, the mobile station, based on these training packets, they, um, they exchange training packets and estimate the channel gain. This channel gain is compared with a threshold. So basically, if, this, if, if, I ha if, if my threshold is satisfied, then training is terminated. Otherwise, the sector that resulted in the maximum uh, gain is further investigated in, in, the, in the subsequent stages or uh, stages of the training uh, process. And of course, this is repeated until, um, until the threshold is satisfied or all stages have been uh, explored. And in that case, if the, if, if, if the maximum uh, uh, channel gain does not satisfy my threshold, then the, max, then the beam directions that uh, result in the maximum, um, maximum channel gain are selected. Um, also in this work, we look in code book design. So we perform hybrid code book design. And our design basically consists of three basic steps. In the first step, we design the digital beamforming vector, and the beamforming beam vector is this design such that the multiplication of the beamforming vector, the digital beamforming vector, 
with the array response vector here results in a constant gain on my desired sector and zero otherwise. And in the paper, it's shown that this can be performed with a simple least square, um, uh, least square uh, equation. After we do this, in the second step, the number of antennas is varied and is actually set as a function of the half beam power beam width. So of course, this has two advantages this year by varying the number of antennas. The first advantage is that if the number of antennas is allowed to be on the order of the number of RF chains, then digital beamforming or digital precoding can be performed in the early stages. The second uh, advantage is that when you have smaller number of antennas, you're actually approximating a wide digital beam with a few wide RF analog beams. And then we're using the digital precoding in the digital domain to compensate for the RF limitations. And as we will show that this will result in, um, in, in, in good beam patterns uh, when compared to the case where we don't vary the number of, of, uh, of antennas or the array size. Of course, if we use large number of arrays, what we're actually doing, we're trying to approximate a wide digital beam with ma many narrow analog beams. And this could result in uh, approximation errors. In the third step, after we have, uh, after we have designed our digital precoder, and we have uh, set our number of antennas. Uh, what we do, we design, here this is F, uh, the precoder, you see here results, uh, stands for unconstrained. So here we have the digital precoder and here we have an analog precoder and a digital baseband precoder. So basically we would like to find FRF, an analog precoder, and a digital precoder that minimizes this function, of course subject to the possible, num the possible um, analog beamforming matrix, which is due to um, RF limitations, for example, quantized phase shifts. And also this here equation, this minimization is subject to uh, power constraint constraints. So once this is performed, we select our, our baseband precoder and also RF uh, precoding, pre pre precoder. Uh, and then we use it to form our, our beams, our training beams. Training and then also our communication beams as well after that. So just to give you an example of, uh, of, of the patterns that result from this uh, hybrid codebook, we have the following. So here's an example of several beam patterns. We have 256 directions. We have uh, four RF chains. And the number of base station antennas, of course, these here are the, the proposed uh, technique. Here we have, we use four, here we use nine and 18 antennas. Um, and we have uh, six bit angle quantization. So this is, this is the beam pattern that results from using our code books. This is the beam pattern that, resu that results from hybrid precoding, which is found in this paper here, this reference. However, here the array size is fixed to 32 antennas and is not varied. And this is here the beam pattern that results from using digital unconstrained beamforming vectors. We see that the proposed technique uh, closely, the patterns that result from the proposed codebooks closely um, are very close to those uh, that, that result from digital beamforming. We see here for this case, <coughs> and also for the case where we have a sector from 0 to 180, and the case where we have a sector from 0 to 90, uh, we see very close resemblance. However, when we have fixed array size, we see that there, is a lot of, there are a lot of approximation errors. And as I have pointed previously, the reason for this is that we are trying to approximate um, a wide beam with many narrow beams. And this could actually result in uh, approximation errors. However, when we try to, uh, in our technique, we are trying to approximate a wide beam with few uh, wide RF beams. And then we apply digital baseband precoding to compensate for um, the RF limitations. It has, also, it has been shown in uh, this reference that as the number of RF chains increase, the beam patterns that result from uh, fixed array length 
uh, become similar to those that is uh, that, that, that similar to, to the beam pattern that results from deep field precoding. So here uh, we're going to move to the performance analysis, and we have two uh, main criteria, uh, two performance measures. So the first per performance measure is the rate, and the second performance measure is the training overhead. So the rate here is we have this upper upper bound, which is log two one plus the quality of service threshold. However, provided that at least one of the path is found to have to yield an SMR that's greater than the threshold, or plus this term, which actually here means that beam training has been performed in all stages, and the maximum um, and the maximum uh, gain has been found to be below the threshold. So in this case, the best beam, uh, the best uh, the, the best beams that maximize the SMR is simply chosen. Uh, we look here at the training overhead or load, which is actually defined as the number of exchange training packets and is, and is upper bounded by this term over here. And for simplicity, we are just going to use, we assume that we have just one path. And this training overhead is upper bounded by this equation, where we have here TO is the maximum training level, training load per level, per stage. For example, if we have in every stage two, we are doing just uh, two surges, like uh, the constant B is equal to two, for example, TO could be eight, because like for every beam, you have other two beams, and then the second beam, you have two beams, so you have like uh, a total of eight. But anyway, this is, TO is the maximum training load per level, multiplied by these two probability terms. The first probability terms captures the possibility that at the S level, so we have like S level or S stages, at the S level, the SNR is found to be above the threshold, and then beam training is terminated. The second uh, term here captures the possibility that uh, the maximum received SNR is below the threshold at the S level. Of course, here F here represents the CDF of the, uh, the channel gain CDF at level S. If we look at some simulation results, uh, we have here, these are the training, these are the parameters that are used. Uh, most importantly, I would like to note, note that we have L equals to three path and we have a 15 dB quality of service threshold. We see here the black uh, plot represents exhaustive search. So we have 256 direction and we are doing an exhaustive search over all directions. And we see that here as the SNR increases which basically means as the mobile station comes closer to the base station, the gain, the rate increases, but however it saturates at some point. And the reason for this saturation is because our quality of service threshold has been satisfied. So there is no need actually to uh, spend time in beam training uh, so, as to, um, so as to get, for example, higher resolution, because we don't actually need that since my quality of service threshold is, has been satisfied. Uh, the, the red plot here is our uh, theoretical upper, ba upper bound. The blue here is actually our technique using the proposed uh, code books. And the magenta plot here is actually the technique that's used in this uh, reference. And they're using the, where we use the code books without varying the array size. And of course here we have a gap. And the gap here is because of the uh, code books, because the code books are they result on errors in the um, early stages. We have a slight gap also here, and this gap could be attributed to the um, estimation errors at the early stages because we have uh, multiple paths. So at early stages, we could have um, errors on estimating the best path, and this is why we see a small gap here. If we look at the training overhead, we, this is at the top here, we have the training overhead of um, non-opportunistic techniques which could be, for example, hierarchical uh, beam training techniques in general, which is constant, since they're always looking for the highest resolution beam. Uh, the red is our up theoretical upper bound. The blue plot here shows our, the, the, the training overhead of the proposed technique, of the opportunistic proposed technique. So we see that as the SMR increases, 
or as the um, MS comes closer to the base station, um, the training overhead reduces. And the reason for this is because the proposed techniques ter technique uh, terminates the training overhead once the threshold is satisfied. And hence, we don't need to actually um, spend time, training time, to look for the um, highest resolution beam. So we see here it's almost like very, uh, almost like becomes negligible at uh, low SMR, but we have very high uh, training here when compared to this here. So in conclusion, in this work, we proposed um, an adaptive or opportunistic beam training algorithm for millimeter wave systems. Um, the proposed technique uh, exploits the channel reciprocity to terminate the training once the quality of service threshold is satisfied. Uh, we used hybrid codebooks with variable array size to improve beam coverage at each stage. We have shown that the proposed technique achieves comparable rates when compared to uh, exhaustive search algorithms with lower training overhead. In addition to this, we have shown that current hybrid codebooks, they do not exploit the array size in their design. And we have shown that by uh, having a flexible array size, we could have better beam, beam patterns with um, lower um, RF chains. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to email me at this email. Thank you very much.